As the psalmist said in Psalm 104, verse 24, O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your possessions. After the Silurian period came the Devonian period. The Devonian period began about 345 million years ago and lasted for about 45 million years. It derives its name from Devon, the region of England where the first fossils of this time were found. The progress of life from water to land continued uninterrupted. Plants grew near ponds and marshes and by the end of the Devonian period, large portions of previously barren land were covered with forest. Thick jungles of fern were populated by the very first land animals. Ancient relatives of spiders and insects pioneered a new method of survival for living out of water, which was breathing air. Numerous lakes and seas diminished during this period, leaving vast swampy areas and stagnant waters. Rotting vegetation polluted the waters and led to widespread extinction of many animals. Devonian living conditions proved to be a challenge for plants and animals alike since both share their acute dependence on water and oxygen. Countless kinds of fishes died trapped in the oxygen deprived waters of ponds and marshes. However, some were able to develop primitive lungs in which to store gulps of fresh air. Later, when ponds dried up and only beds of mud remained, some fish displayed an astonishing power of adaptation as they used their short fins to push themselves to other pools of water. Thus, fishes provided an evolutionary stepping stone for animals to inhabit land. Had it not been for them, the story of life on our planet might have reached its conclusion and at this point, at this point, as it was, the fishes gradually paved the way for the development of the amphibians. Primitive plants that lived on land encountered considerable difficulties surviving the long drastic climatic changes of the Devonian period. At first, thick vegetation of seedless leafless plants established itself in the swampy remains of a lake or sea. Later, persistent droughts managed to extract the last supply of moisture and turn green swampy areas into desert-like wastelands of dirt and dust. Flooding waters and seas in subsequent stretches of time returned to invade the same land areas and new marshes sprang up again. This cycle of land plants thriving and dying must have repeated itself several times over the 45 million years that made up the Devonian period. From mountain ranges in Western Europe, geologists have unearthed the best fossils available of primitive Devonian plants. The first that was discovered was the Rhinia and the Asteroxylon. These were two common examples of the best fossils that were found. They were both spore-bearing plants that had no roots and their primitive leaves were directly attached to their stems. There were no roots at all, just attached to their stems. Corals continue to be adopt, abundant in the shallow seas of the Devonian period. These Cnidarians existed in numerous varieties, shapes and colors. So many islands were formed by the work of these small animals that some scientists refer to this period as the age of corals. Fossils of corals belonging to this time include the Carninia right here. This was an example of one of the corals found, the Carninia. Another example of the corals found is the Blothrophyllum. And the larger one, the Siphonophrentis. Siphonophrentis, that is it there. So these three were examples of corals that were found in the Devonian period. The brittle star is a common name given to spiny echinoderms whose arms can easily break off. Ancient brittle stars appeared at the beginning of the Ordovician period, but the best fossils are found in the Devonian. 
Modern long armed echinoderms, like their ancient relatives, can grow an arm to replace one that breaks off. With snake like arms, brittle stars grasp large particles of food, while smaller pieces are moved toward the mouth by means of many tube like feet. The cephalopods that lived millions of years ago were different from their present day counterparts. The former secreted an outer shell and lived in it, in it for protection. Remember the snails that we spoke about in the previous times? Now the weight of the shell prevented them from moving rapidly after their prey. In order to become faster moving, they had to acquire the ability to swim. So the early cephalopods had to acquire ability to emit internal gases that accumulated inside the shell and gave the animals lightness and buoyancy. Primitive cephalopods had straight shells, but in time they became coiled. These nautiloids survived the Devonian period, although their numbers decreased markedly. One of the main characteristics of cephalopods is their muscular strength. They can entangle and exhaust their victims with their long, powerful tentacles. When in danger, these animals secrete a dark liquid which crowds the water and camouflages their odor so that predators cannot follow them. Man has captured these animals and made use of this liquid as permanent ink for thousands of years. Now the Gigantoceras, this animal here, the Gigantoceras, a coiled nautiloid, is an example of a large cephalopod that lived in the Devonian eras. It could crawl and swim. Arthropods lived on in many forms. The spiny trilobites persisted for many millions of years and the first example of a trilobite in this period was the Teratastis. A large spiny trilobite measured about 20 inches in length. The Ceratages right here, another spiny trilobite grew no larger than 2 inches. These trilobites probably crawled around the sea bottom. The spectacular surge of fishes grants the Devonian period another name, the Age of Fishes, due to the many fishes that came out in the Devonian period. The first fish-like creatures developed at the closing of the Silurian period. If you remember, we said that there were agnats, also known as jawless fish, from our Silurian period. An example was the Brachinia, the Drepanapsis, they were all um, jawless fishes called Agna. Now some of these primitive fishes developed strong protective shells or armor. Those that didn't soon become victims of voracious predators such as the sea scorpions. However, no matter how protective their armor was, it was not enough for the fish to escape fatal destruction from the fire-like claws of the Eurypterids. Outrunning the sea scorpions meant becoming faster swimmers. Armor offered protection from smaller marine predators, but it weighed down the fish-like creatures which made them easy prey for bigger and faster swimmers. Not all armored fishes were able to reach a good balance between these two forms of protection. This may very well be the reason why ostracoderms became extinct. Modern agnats, probable descendants of the ostracoderms, are the hackfish and the lampreys. A typical early Devonian ostracoderm depicted in our timeline chart is the Anglaspis, right here. It was about six inches long, with eyes widely spaced, and its body covered with scales all over. It had scales all over. Like all of the ostracoderms, Anglaspis swallowed its food mixed with sand and mud using its jawless mouth. The creature was then able to sort out nutrients by employing its gills as trainers. Along the astracoderms, a new type of fish developed. They were called the placoderms. The placoderms were more modern in appearance, although their evolutionary development continued for millions of years. These placoderms became extinct in the Permian period. These plate skinned fishes, as they are called, were indeed the forerunners of the modern fishes today. Their bony plates and sometimes armored heads protected them from predators. Their legacy to modern fishes is found in their biting jaws and paired fins. A representative of the placoderms was this very ugly and very wicked Dynecthes. 
which is called the terrible fish. This giant fish grew to a length of 30 feet. It was not a good swimmer, so it remained in one position just waiting for other fish to swim by. There it would catch its victims between its hinged jaws and sharp teeth. Over millions of years, some of the placoderms lost their outer body plates and armor and became the modern class chondrichthys, also known as sharks. Just like the ancient placoderms, the internal structure of these fishes is still cartilage rather than bone. Here, the Cladocelaki is an example of a primitive shark that lived in mid Devonian times. It grew to be about two to four length feet, but its skeleton was made of cartilage. So the skeleton inside is made of cartilage, not bones. With well developed broad fins and a sleek body, Cladocelaki was probably the fastest moving animal of the whole Devonian period. This Cladocelaki was the fastest in the whole Devonian period. Well preserved remains of this shark are found today in Ohio in the United States of America. Now the Pleurocanthus right here, the Pleurocanthus, another primitive shark, reached the length of 8 feet including its elongated dorsal fin and pointed tail. A long spine protruded from the back of its head all the way and this shark became extinct millions of years later in the Permian period. Placoderms that developed internal bony skeletons and shared their outer plate provided a necessary evolutionary step that led to present day types of fishes. They were grouped together and classified as osteichthys, a word that means bony fish. Two groups of osteichthyans developed and both played important roles in the evolution of life on our planet. At first, the lobe fin fishes, so called because of their fleshy fins that look like lobes, invaded all water courses and basins. From this group of bony fishes, the first long fish evolved. During the frequent hot, dry spells of this period, some fishes, like here, the Dipteras, survived the choking effect of putrid, stagnant water by taking air directly into their lungs. Primitive lungs allow these animals to store oxygen and absorb it slowly, while many fishes equipped only with gills were doomed to extinction. But this was able to survive because they had their lungs that was able to store oxygen. Now the Scalmanacea here, the Scalmanacea over here was another long fish which became prevalent in late Devonian. This creature demonstrated remarkable power of survival against severe and adverse climactic conditions. The second group of bony fishes, the ray fin fishes, differ wildly from the lobe fin fishes. The essential characteristic that earned these fishes their common name was their rigid, slightly movable fins that were stretched over bony rays. No other vertebrates today are as varied and as diverse as the modern day ray fin fishes, which since Devonian times have proliferated in both fresh and marine waters. The Chirolepis exemplifies a primitive ray fin fish. Its skeleton was made mostly of cartilage except for the bony skull, right here. It may have reached two feet in length by the end of the Triassic period most primitive ray fin fishes became extinct and more modern types came to dominate life on the water. So here we've looked at the Devonian period, the age of fish or the age of corals, and we can see how we had diverse kinds of fish. We had fish that, that had backbones, so here the, verte the vertebrates began to form. So in our next period, we'll be moving to the Carboniferous period to see what animals came in at this time.